century, last of a family of four, still travels the roads of the hills of Donegal. Tinsmith, fiddler, storyteller, he moves from house to house, village to village. The past preserved, a gentleman of the road. As you know, we, we, we were travelling people, you know. My father was a travelling man, and his, his father, and, the, and his father before that, were all travelling people. That's the truth. John Doherty travelling, John Doherty playing, John Doherty working his life. A suitable subject now for a social anthropologist, Sean O'Hockey of the Irish Folklore Commission. There were a big number of families who, who used to come. There were, uh, that I remember, there were Gallaghers, there were Kellys, there were Freels, and of course our own famous Doherty's. Now, the Doherty's were, I would dare say, were the most welcome of all these travelling people who came into the area for the simple reason that they entertained the people of the neighbourhood while they were there. And as well as that, they were always a very respectable family. There were no uh, licensed dance halls at that time, and uh, as you know, the country people, they always came together in and, and, uh, certain houses and had their big nights, their bits of a, a dance and a hooli, and uh, they, they were particularly good when these uh, travelling people came along. We were all just beating about and scenting to see where is the hair lying. And then, to do like that for a while, searching and... And those days, you see, they were... There were, there were country dancing, that you went to a certain town land, say, and no sooner we would be in that town land arrived, nor the news would spread all around, or you wouldn't guess who, who has arrived, and, was, and the place where we always used to stay. Uh, Mickey Doherty and the family, and uh, they, have, they have two fiddles with them and a set of bagpipes. And so we're expecting we'll have a bit of music. Oh, where's the big night going to be? Somebody else would ask. Oh, I hear I hear that such a man, <coughs> maybe Tommy Maloney, has given the house for a big night. And I think they are to play. Oh, it's them, so sure there'll be no other body playing but them, I know. everybody here. Hi, good day, Johnny. I'm glad to see you. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, a beautiful weather. It's lovely, Johnny. Well, I'm doing a bit of work today. Yeah. Uh, I'm making new stuff or repairing old stuff or anything like that that you need done. Well, you're very welcome in the right Thank time, you. John. We need a milk porridge out of it, if you couldn't mind. Very good. Very good. I'll make yeah. that. I'll make that. I'll not be wrong doing that. Now. And we'll have a beer cup of tea and a tune afterwards. Thanks a million, that's good. When these uh, Doherty's came along, they were great tradesmen. They were referred to uh, not uh, even as tinsmiths in, down in our part of the country. They were, they were known as white smiths, and uh, rightly so. They made all the vessels uh, being used in, in the household, and as well as that, they even made lamps. Uh, something like uh, the equivalent of our hurricane lamps that are bought today in the shops. They were able to make those in the old days. And um, for that reason, the, the, as I said, apart from their music altogether, they were very, very welcome in an area when they came, in, when they came into it. Well, then, of course, you see, my father was a... and my brothers, they were... 
You see, they were first-class tinsmiths. And then what they used to do then, you see, well, some of the people around the place would say, well, I wish to goodness that Mickey Doherty and the sons would come. There's the thing I have to get done. And then they would work then through in the daytime. And they would make all these orders and have them delivered and all to. And then they would knock a bit of money out of it, you know, too. Oh, very good. Well, then my father would have maybe a, might have a few, a couple of nice ponies, he might have a few nice donkeys, and the man would come in and chat to my father, well, Mickey, what kind of a donkey, what kind of donkeys have you with ye? Then the finish of all would be then a big dance again somewhere else. <laughs> Once the world was tiny. Before buses came or newspapers were read, there were just the Doherty's. Oh, there was trade, yes, and a word of the outside world, the next town even, and ponies and porringers. But what mattered in the end was the music, the Doherty's passport, a people's relief. <laughs> that leads you into a lot of company, surely, and makes a lot of friends, I know. Yes, yes, sir. So, it happened to be one day, I was coming... The stories, too, had patterns, rhythms, choruses. They were serials, too, stretching from night to night as the teller moved from house to house, the people with him. To down the big fiddle from up from the head of the dresser, and <coughs> he come up and he prepared. And I was, you know, I was only a young lad at the time, about 15 years or so. He left down the fiddle like that on the table. So see to me, did ever you hear a tune they call the Gerda left behind me? <laughs> <laughs> well, indeed, says I, it's a good tune, and I heard it, but indeed, says I, well, says he, you'll not be long to hear it now, and just to run the bow like that across. Here goes, then, says he, off it goes. <laughs> and he, he, he played, and he played, and he played, and I, I had a job to keep from laughing, you know. <laughs> the music was always of the people, by the people, but not always for the people. Once, before their flight, it was the music of the quarrelling earls of Ireland. They were patrons of the arts, supporters of their rituals and their culture, defenders of their faith. When we had the clans system here in this country of ours, when we had the O'Donnells and the O'Neills and the Maguires and so forth and so on, each family had their own tradesmen. Not alone had they their tradesmen, they, they had their storytellers, they had their poets, and, uh, and um, men of, of literature. And, uh, as I say, they had their tinsmiths and their blacksmiths too. When uh, these families were broken up, say, um, uh, it started off here after the Battle of Kinsale after 1607, and the O'Donnells, as you know, and the O'Neills left, most of these tradesmen went on the road. And John Doherty and his family were offsprings of these, uh, of these tradesmen, and good tradesmen they were. Well then, there were a class of people, and you know, they were uh, too but highly sprung to begin to do, you know, very rough labour, and they went in more for music and, and trade. That was that was that was chiefly the. Rock.